Hey guys, and welcome back to the Fiberista Files, my chronicle of broadening my fibery footprint. Uh, today is April 22nd. It's Thursday. It's kind of early in the morning. You can see the sunlight kind of streaming in. Sorry about that. Um, man, oh man, do I have some good stuff to share with you today. So let's get started. First up is what's in the dye pot. Uh, I thought today I would show you this skein of sock yarn. This is called Sea Glass. It is a skein of 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon sock yarn. It's um, it's a fingering weight. This sock yarn is a little bit thicker um, than some other sock yarns I've seen, but it's gorgeous. It's dyed up in shades of um, greens and blues. There's some brighter like baby blues here and um, almost like a mint julep green, and they blend together all throughout the skein. I'm not sure why you can see that, um, but they're, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. This was done um, in the space dyed method where I had the yarn laid out, and I poured blue on one end and green on the other end, and then with what I had left in the dye solutions of both, I put them together to get sort of that tealy blue green and uh, put that in the middle. So this is available on my Etsy page, and I will be sure to link that in the show notes. Uh, next up is processes. How I do what I do. Um, I thought today I would show you a little bit about how I take my pictures. Uh, buying and selling online pictures are super duper important, of course. And I found a tutorial online. I'll try and link it in the show notes about a do-it-yourself um, light box. And this is what I have. It is quite literally a cardboard box and there are all kinds of sides cut out and one side that the back that stays the same and what you do is you set it over the fiber I don't know if you can see in there like that you set it over the fiber and the fiber sits right in here and you I do this outside usually where the sunlight natural sunlight is able to filter through this this is just tissue paper and I filter it the sunlight filters through the tissue paper um, lessens the shadows and the harshness quality of the light uh, the fiber can almost glow at some points and I set the fiber in here on a piece of poster paper and I take pictures usually from this angle and sometimes I come from over here which is the second open side. Um, this took me about 10 minutes to make maybe and I had the tissue paper and I got the box for free so it didn't cost me anything. Uh, it's kind of well used, it's also kind of dying. It's probably time to get a new one but right now it works for me and I'm not too worried about it. I do use a digital camera to take my pictures. This is just your run-of-the-mill, it's a Sanyo digital camera. It's a 10 megapixel camera, but Etsy pictures uh, can't be that file size. They have to be smaller, so I put it on the 5 megapixel setting. I haven't had any problems with that. Um, it's a really good little camera. It's pretty simple and pretty straightforward. Um, I do know that there are other things you can do with, with filtering the amount of white and tinfoil to reflect light and I haven't really gotten into that. I think my pictures are okay. Uh, the light here remains pretty good as long as I do it early in the morning when it's pretty strong. Um, I don't know. You tell me what you think. I have noticed that the pictures look better if you, if I, on the Etsy page there's that list of thumbnails and they tend to look a little bit better if they're consistent. Like for example, my yarns are all pictures of just this piece, this twist right here is usually the first thumbnail. And I tend to think that that, uh, maybe it's not better, but it makes it nice and consistent. Um, moving right along. The next thing I wanted to talk to you about is growing my business. And man, oh man, have we done a lot, have I done a lot, we've done a lot on that front. I am, as of last week, a registered vendor for the 2010 Maine Fiber Frolic, sponsored by the Maine Alpaca Association. Um, this is June 5th and 6th in the in Windsor Fair on the Windsor Fairgrounds. This is the 10th year that the Fiber Frolic has been uh, going on. It's wonderful. I went last year as just a consumer and had a great time. There are tons of vendors there, somewhat bigger names: Spunky Eclectic, String Theory Yarn, Golden Ring Spindles, um, Enchanted Knoll Farms. A lot of people who I really admire and I really love their stuff. It was awesome. They're very accessible. You can talk to them. You can, you know, say, oh my gosh, I love your stuff and be all fangirl and they don't mind. At least they didn't appear to mind. Um, it was really great. So I, my husband and I sat down and worked out the financials. I ended up, um, in order to become a vendor, you have to put quite a considerable amount of cash down. You have to put down $75 for the spot, um, which isn't a lot actually, but you also have to have liability insurance and I had to pay $80 down for the insurance and I'll have the remainder to pay here in another couple of months. Um, so in case somebody trips over a cord or something and sues me, I'm covered. 
Uh, and I had to I had to get a wholesale account. I wasn't going to have anywhere near enough stuff. I'm probably still hopefully not going to have enough stuff to to sell in my in my booth. So to to get a wholesale account with a, a wholesale vendor, you need for this particular vendor that I'm using, you need a five hundred dollar initial initial order. So my husband and I sat down and we ended up putting on about three hundred dollars of our own money uh, to get a wholesale order and. <laughs> That came yesterday. I ended up getting 44 pounds of undyed fiber. And uh, that brings me right to grabby hands, actually, because this is what I got. This is one of five cones of sock yarn. This is uh, Superwash Colonial and Nylon Mix sock yarn. It's a light fingering weight. This cone has about 1,700 yards on it. And uh, I have five of them. That's a lot of sock yarn. My husband is making me a swift right now to measure out um, the yardage on that. The sock yarn skeins will be about 434 yards a piece. So that's awesome. Um, I also got, I think I just bought three pounds of the Superwash Merino Tensile. This is all gonna look exactly the same to you, but I'm gonna show you anyway, cause I'm excited. Um, Superwash Merino Tensile, very shiny, beautiful stuff. Love it. And it's so soft, it's softest stuff ever. Um, I've got 10 pounds of Superwash Merino. This is my giant bag of Superwash Merino, 10 pounds of it. Um, that's pretty much what I'll be doing today is wash, is doing up the Superwash Merino. And because I love it, because it is my favorite um, yarn to spin with, as well as to dye and just to smush around, I got 10 pounds of Superwash BFL, which if you have never spun BFL, get some. It's gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. I first found that from uh, CJ and absolutely, uh, absolutely adored it. it. It's just, it almost spins itself. It's, it's gorgeous. Um, the only thing I have left is the inspiration, kind of quasi grabby hands, um, from another vendor. This is a skein of sock yarn from Illuminated Yarns on Etsy. This colorway I named for her, the, the dyer's name is Karen and I love her dearly. Um, you can see this is beautiful, gorgeous reds and oranges and blacks and uh, all of those. This game is called Fraggle Rock. Um, as soon as I named it for her, I had to buy it because I love Fraggle Rock. Um, it's beautiful. This is Ultra Merino and Nylon. I don't know what Ultra Merino is. I don't know if that's supposed to be super soft or very, very super wash. I'm not really sure. Don't care. Love it. Got to mint with it. I'm actually designing a sock called the Fraggle Rock Sock to knit with this. So I'm really excited about that. I hope to get that going soon. And again, um, the shop is Illuminated Yarns on Etsy and I will link to that in the show notes. Um, wow, I talked really fast. That's pretty much done. Um, let me check my notes here and see if there's anything that I missed. No, nope, didn't miss anything. Uh, I am going to be in the dye pots all day. If you... I'll probably save it for next week. Next week uh, episode, I hope to talk a little bit about um, the term Fiberista, where it came from. This is the Fiberista files. I'm the Fiberista. Uh, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background on where I came from with that name, how I identified with it, the t-shirt that resulted from it, and uh, your chance to get one of your own. So until next week, guys, happy spinning and knitting. Thanks.